thank you, thank you very much. Delighted, delighted to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I come before you today as a concerned citizen. The very landscape of our great country is being changed for the worse. The greatness of America has been threatened. Our current president has apologized to other nations for our country, while the Republican candidates have spent their time engaged in petty personal attacks and have spent very little time on the issues. I have always believed that if you could kick the person in the pants most responsible for your trouble, you wouldn't sit for a month. In the case of Newt Gingrich, I should be very much surprised if he ever sits again. We need a bold and decisive candidate who is willing to face the issues, issues head on. Therefore, I, Theodore Roosevelt, do here and now declare my candidacy to become the next president of the great United States of America. chief vice of American politics has always been the avoidance of saying anything real on real issues. I plan to eradicate that vice as one would eradicate a rat, with the quiet subtlety of a Winchester, of course. It is a fact that the number of un unemployed persons in our country is truly alarming. These unemployed persons, some of them are taking to the streets and occupying them. I am told this causes much mischief, since there are many moving automobiles in the streets these days. I talked to an occupier the other day. I believe his name was Joe, from Little Springs, Missouri. He asked me why government was doing nothing to give him a job and better his place in life. I told him, Joe, the human body has two ends on it. One for sitting on, and the other for creating with. Sometimes people get these ends reversed. When that happens, they need a good kick in the seat of the pants. <laughs> Washington may be doing nothing to better your situation. Why are you doing nothing, Joe? Why don't you get up off this end and start using this end? He responded by spitting in my face and calling me a commie one percenter, which is why I've always said that the first requisite of a good citizen in our, of our country is that he be able and willing to pull his own weight. And if he is able and willing to do so, we demand that business give him a square deal. If businesses are willing to give him a square deal, I must insist that government give a square deal to businesses. Another issue that we face today is the threat of Iran obtaining nuclear weapons. One of my opponents has said, we mustn't overreact if this happens. Don't worry about it. Give peace a chance. Well, I wasn't around in the 1960s, but I was told we already gave peace a chance, and all it got it was pieces. I have always believed that war is not merely justifiable, but imperative upon honorable men where peace can only be obtained by the sacrifice of conscientious conviction or of national welfare. I have always said, don't hit at all if it is honorably possible to avoid hitting, but never hit softly. So if Iran obtains nuclear weapons on my watch, I will hit them with my big stick, and I will not hit them softly. I will hit them hard! Many of my detractors have said that I am too partisan to be president in these polarizing times. Balderdash, I say, for that is what bipartisanism is. Pure balderdash. Rubbish. All great leaders have been partisan. In other words, they have had their strong beliefs and they have stuck to those beliefs. I will not abandon my beliefs simply to please my opponents. Likewise, I cannot respect any one of my opponents who would abandon his beliefs merely to please me. Since when has cowardice become a virtue? A man who is not willing to stick to his guns, 
has no business carrying those guns in the first place. So, I, ladies and gentlemen, I will not be a bipartisan president. Instead, I will be right. I will not yield to wrong-headed ideas simply to please those whose heads are wrong. I care not what others think of what I do. I only care what I think of what I do. That, my friends, is character. We are face to face with our destiny. We must meet it with high and a resolute courage. For us, it's a life of action, of strenuous performance of duty. Let us live life in the harness. Let us rather run the risk of wearing out than rusting out. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. May God bless. May God bless America.